an assassin gets killed, a spacecraft crashes into the moon, and Jamestown, New York produces a legend. All on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is April 26, 2022. It is the 116th day of the year. You got 249 days to make something out of this year. Good luck. Today is the 17th Tuesday in the 18th week and the 38th day of spring. You got a little less than two months left until summer. Today is International Chernobyl Disaster Remembrance Day. The International Chernobyl Disaster Remembrance Day remembers the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986. A routine shutdown was to be conducted, however, due to structural errors with the reactor, a surge was created, which resulted in one of the world's largest chemical explosions. The explosion released radiation over many parts of the Soviet Union. If you don't know, that's in actually Ukraine now. They just were fighting over it in part of the war. It's really strange why you'd want that place. According to the United Nations, over 8 million people were exposed to radiation from this explosion or meltdown, whatever you want to call it. Today, radiation still threatens surrounding areas and communities. With the help of 45 donor nations and more than $2 billion, a reinforced safety confinement was placed over the old shelter in 2019. That was just, I mean, that scared us here in the United States, even though that was in the Soviet Union. When that happened, I mean, we had Three Mile Island and things like that, but this was so bad. I mean, everyone started moving away from nuclear power plants here in the United States. All right, let's see what else. April 26 has given us. 1607, the Virginia Company colonists make landfall at Cape Henry. 1768, the Royal Academy of Arts hosts its first art opening. 1865, Union cavalry troops corner and shoot dead John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of President Abraham Lincoln in Virginia. <laughs> So the cavalry unit and a couple detectives cornered Booth and one of his compatriots, David Harold, in a barn. By then, Booth and Harold had been on the run for 12 days. So they're in this barn and they told them to come out, you know, and they had them surrounded. And if they weren't going to come out, they were going to set the barn on fire and kind of drive them out. Booth asked for a little more time to consider their offer. And Booth kind of yelled back, we don't even know who you are. They were hoping these were sympathetic Southerners and let them go and all this. But Booth kept trying to get them to identify themselves. Finally, one of the detectives said it don't make any difference who we are, we know who you are, and we want to take you as prisoners. Was one-legged man, and he even told them to withdraw 100 yards and he'd come out and fight them. It's like, okay, you got, you're surrounded. Why are you trying to negotiate? Just either die in place or come out firing. He then asked for 50 yards and he'd come out fighting. They told him, no, just come out. And then his words were, well, my brave boys, prepare a stretcher for me then. Many of the soldiers that were there said that he did it in this like theater voice, like he was on stage or something. Now around this time, Booth's accomplice decided to give himself up. Him and Booth were arguing. They could be heard arguing. And last thing they heard Booth say to him was, you're a damn coward. And Harold came out the barn door. So they eventually set the barn on fire. And at one point, a army sergeant named Boston Corbett got a clear shot through one of the slats in the thing and took his shot. When Corbett later testified, he said he'd been watching Booth through a crack in the burning barn. And he said, I could see him, but he could not see me. Then he said, it was not through fear that I shot him, but because it was my impression that it was time the man was shot, for I thought he would do harm to our men. In the end, Corbett collected the $1,653 reward for his efforts. They dragged Booth over to a grassy area away from the burning barn, and uh, he was trying to talk, so they were kind of leaned down. He was, you know, having a hard time speaking, and he said, tell mother I died for my country. Well, that wasn't his last words. This thing dragged on for several hours. They eventually dragged him to the porch of the person who owned the barn and uh, kind of put him up and he was struggling to drink water and he kept begging for them to kill him. A local doctor was brought to the scene and pronounced his condition as hopeless. 1903, Madrid Associate Football Club is founded. 1920, ice hockey makes its Olympic debut in the Antwerp Games, with center Frank Fredriksson scoring seven goals in Canada's 12-1 drubbing of Sweden in the gold medal match. 1954, the first clinical trials of Jonas Salk's polio vaccine begin in Fairfax County, Virginia. 1962, NASA's Ranger 4 spacecraft crashes into the moon. 1991, 55 tornadoes break out in central United States before the outbreak ends. Andover, Kansas would record the year's first F5 tornado. 
2019 Marvel Studios blockbuster film, Avengers Endgame. It is released, becoming the highest grossing film of all time, surpassing the previous box office record of Avatar. Avatar held on to that for a very long time. You know, it's really strange about the Marvel superhero movies and all the superhero movies coming out right now. A lot of people like Martin Scorsese and a lot of these really great directors don't think that they're really worthy of getting the best picture and things like that. Almost how people don't view a comedy as being able to get the best picture. It's got to be a drama or something like that to get best picture. Doesn't make sense to me. Happening right now. Elon Musk buys Twitter for $44 billion. So this is kind of strange. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think there's two... Well, there's three ways that this could go. Twitter can become better, Twitter can stay the same, or Twitter can get much worse. My opinion, I think it's going to be stays the same or gets worse. I just do. Elon Musk says he wants to buy Twitter to bring back freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is always good until it becomes fake news or propaganda, which in the 2016 election, we've realized that there were outside governments using Twitter, using Facebook to manipulate how we voted. So are we bringing that back? I guess we're in a wait and see thing right now, but that's the buzz all over the internet that Elon Musk has now bought Twitter and he's going to make some changes. So stay tuned for that one. Should be pretty interesting. I like Elon Musk. I don't have a problem with him. I think he does great things with SpaceX. Teslas are pretty cool. I mean, I like how he's doing the internet thing and he's got the solar panels and all that good stuff. That's all great. I don't know how this one's going to work out and I hope it doesn't tarnish his image. I mean, a lot of people don't like the dude already. I like him, but I hope this doesn't really affect who he is and how he does things. We'll see. Movies released on April 26, 2013, Pain and Gain. Now, the reason Avengers wasn't on this one, I talked about it last year. Anyway, this is Michael Bay's crime comedy about bodybuilders that are played by Dwayne Johnson and Mark Wahlberg who get caught in the middle of an extortion ring and kidnapping scheme. This is a pretty funny movie, and it's based on a true story. If you ever get a chance, it's a little slapstickish and a little ridiculous, but a Apparently, it's kind of what these dudes did. It's pretty funny. But the film is based on a 1999 series of Miami News Times articles. Collins wrote the book, Pain and Gain. This is a true story. That was the title, Pain and Gain. This is a true story. Born on April 26, 1933, Carol Burnett. She hosted The Carol Burnett Show on CBS after winning Tony, Emmy, and Golden Globe Awards for her work in various genres. Before fame, she worked as a hat check girl, living in a boarding house for women, pursuing a career in acting, and starred in a theater hit Once Upon a Mattress. She actually starred in a Twilight Zone episode. Died on April 26, 1989, Lucille Ball. You know, I misspoke at the beginning of this. I said produces, but I should say Jamestown, New York loses a legend. My mistake. Lucille Ball was a classic actress and comedian who became immortalized on TV's I Love Lucy. Everybody knows this. They just had a pretty good show on Amazon, I believe. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard it was pretty good about Desi and Lucy. Um, it, I'm going to watch it. Maybe I'll talk about it next time. She was married to her co-star Desi Arnaz from 1940 to 1960. She was married to Gary Morton from 1961 until her death in 1989. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.